book fans, welcome to another exciting edition of Cammy's Comic Corner. I'm your host as always, Cammy. Now this episode I got a very important announcement that could benefit you at the end of the review, so stick around till then. But let's get right into the reviews. The pick of the week from Marvel, we have Avengers Academy number 12, written by Christos Gage and art by Tom Rainey. Now in this issue we have Karina plucking the bodies of the students from the Academy from the future and then fusing and melding their conscience into these adult bodies. So they are still themselves, only they have a bunch of, uh, a life's worth of experiences. Whether it's um, Finesse uh, having her Taskmaster powers like all filled up with all the warriors, like moves from warriors she hasn't even met yet. Or Reptile, who can actually transform into a gigantic fucking T-Rex all of a sudden because the Pym particles have been advanced that much. But some people like Hazmat or Metal or Veil, vale, they're still kind of the same. Uh, they don't, like, Hazmat's not out of the suit. Metal is still a freaking big walking looking robot dude. And Veil vale is like a ghost practically at this point. So not everyone's happy. I mean, Stryker, he has all these great lightning powers now, so he doesn't mind. But he's like, yeah, yeah, it sucks for everybody else. Well, yeah, and so even though their bodies were taken from the future, they were taken from multiple futures. And so when they ask uh, Karina, hey, is there any chance for us to be normal in the future? She kind of, you know, just doesn't say anything, which is a good indicator that they're going to be like this for the rest of their lives. So now that gives them enough, like, rage to go and, and face her husband, Korvac, and beat his ass down. And that's what they proceed to do. Uh, they are able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. The only casualty that we think that we see is Stryker, but once you die with the, your older future body, you go back to your normal body. But that was too much for Stryker, and he runs out of the room like a crying little pansy. He's like, I'm not going to put my life on the line for this or anybody here. But eventually, thanks to Vale being able to control his body for a short time because she's practically a ghost, and Hazmat just letting him have everything, all of her rage, suppressed rage, it makes him disappear, makes him be gone. And when Karina tries to turn everybody back with her magic, the only person who's not changed back is Reptil. He, since his origin is sort of magic, he chooses. He wants to stay like this for a while. And then because Vale was inside Korvac, who was practically a god for a little while, she was enough, it was enough for her to maintain her Vale form and stop from dying. And then at the end, we get a very, very touching moment between Metal and Hazmat, both having a good cry because no matter what the future holds, they're going to be a couple of freaks together. So it was an amazing issue. I love this issue. It had so many great moments. Uh, the, the art was just fantastic, and Christos Gage sure knows how to write one hell of a story. I, I love these characters, and uh, next issue is Prom, so that should be fun. Now on to the Fast Five. First up, from Image, we have Invincible number 79. Now, Mark really, as much as the you know, he likes the new outfit, now that he's back, he wants to go with a little bit more of a retro look. It feels like him. And then as soon as he's back on Earth again, you know, he's going back to fighting crime. People are, high, you know, calling a hero for hire, as it were, and he's the one who goes and takes care of it. And he's just loving it again. He's, uh, you know, it's what he misses. It's just like the small, the smaller things that you can punch. Not Ultramite armies and whatnot. While he was gone, though, Eve and his mom became best friends. That's kind of freaking him out a little bit. But they have to explain, like, listen, you were gone for a very long time. What, we're just not going to talk to one another and, and share embarrassing stories about you? And then the issue concludes with a uh, dinner party over at Immortal and Duplicate's house. Uh, they're, you know, getting to have a fun time, just chatting, and oh, what being a mother like for Kate and all that. And at one point when uh, Eve is helping bathe uh, Abraham, which is Kate's child, she just can't. She breaks down into tears when Mark goes and then tries to comfort her. He finds out the truth that she had an abortion while he was gone. And so she kind of gets serious all of a sudden. It's like, oh, oh, okay, uh, it's the greatest superhero comic in the galaxy, but yeah, they have those little uh, real issues. And, you know, you don't always have to worry or uh, r rely on Ryan Otley's gorgeous art of someone exploding or being torn apart to really hit you home. Just the mere fact that she had an abortion because she had no clue when Mark might be back makes Mark feel god-awful, and he's apologetic that she, he had to put her through that. That's why, no glove, no love, people. But it was a great issue nonetheless. Uh, if you've been liking Invincible, wanting the whole war to end, not to worry, they're moving forward now. And uh, hopefully it'll be out on a little bit more of a regular basis. 
Next up from Marvel, we have Uncanny X-Force number 8. Now, we have Deadpool doing some recon on this old Cold War-type base. Apparently, there have been uh, readings from uh, Betsy, Psylocke, that there's a, a very powerful telepath there, and something about working with uh, uh, stealth nuclear missiles. And so, when Deadpool doesn't uh, report back in, they have to go and find out what happened to him. Uh, before all this, though, uh, she, being Psylocke, has been really trying to suppress Archangel and Warren, Angel's mind, and keep him from going out and just ruining Warren's life. You know, control the angel. And so she's able to put him in a cage of sorts in his mind for a while. But when they find out what the telepath they're up against is, it's none other than uh, the Shadow King. And he's really wanting to go another round two with Psylocke. And so while they're battling... Uh, he has the entire X-Force team under his control, except for uh, Phantom X, because Phantom X is the only one who has the psychic dampeners on, and is going, listen, if we're going to go into a, a situation like this, we should all have them, and sure enough, that's why. He, he's right as usual. But basically, it goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and thanks to uh, Shadow King trying to go into Warren's mind and use Archangel against her, he actually confuses everybody as Archangel kill Shadow King and you know he's protect even though he's trying to overcome Warren he also kind of needs Warren to survive in a way so it was a very good issue very a lot of uh, psychic warfare as it were and then I I was liking Billy Tan's art on this a lot of people are going oh where'd opinion go hey Billy Tan can stay in, in, as far as I'm concerned it's good good stuff next up from DC we have Green Lantern number 65 now Kilowog is one of those lanterns who wasn't under the spell of Parallax. Why? Because he's had an encounter with Parallax before, and therefore he's kind of had a resistance towards him. Well, uh, Krona, or, yeah, no, no, I'm sorry, yeah, Krona doesn't like this, so Krona, you know, has to really force Kilowog to become a lantern, and while all this is going on, we have Hal and Guy on that uh, blizzard planet, <laughs> Hoth, as it were, uh, looking for the safe house, which they find. It's a ship that transports them to Oa. They want to regroup with John and Kyle because they kind of come to the conclusion of if we could resist it, they probably could too because of their dealings with Parallax in the past as well. So when they all uh, meet on Oa, it's just, they're right into the hornet's nest and it doesn't seem to be going anyone's way. But Hal forgets to mention that uh, when the Book of Black sucked in all the other lanterns, it left the rings behind. And so in order to, you know, fight Oa and the Green Lanterns and Corona, they have to be lanterns again, right? And so they pick from the rings selected which core they want to be on. Obviously, Hal is with Sinestro Corps because he's just had such a nice little history with them. Kyle becomes a lantern of hope. Uh, Guy, obviously, is a red lantern of rage. I mean, he's, he's just fallen off the wagon. He's a red lantern again. And then John makes an interesting pick. He first wants to go with orange, but that doesn't suit him, according to Hal. And I'm thinking, wait, why did you even offer him the ring then? So he goes with Indigo instead. And so now they're about to go and kick some more ass in Green Lantern Corps, which also came out this week. It was a very good issue. It's very cool always to see lanterns wearing different lantern rings. But let's just face it. Hal looks good in yellow. I'm just saying. Next up from Image, we have Super Dinosaur number one. Now, this is the latest uh, Image book from Kirkman and Howard, the creative team that brought you Astounding Wolfmen. Well, they're back together, and they're having an Image book that's not set in the Invincible Universe. They have Derek Dynamo, who is the son of Dr. Dynamo, who has discovered a hollow Earth, well, an Earth within an Earth. I mean, Earth is hollow, but the, the Earth down below is Dinor. And it has a special kind of, uh, well, first of all, like, world, because you have dinosaurs alive and well. And he has his own uh, fellow scientist, Max Maximus, who helped uh, fit the dinosaurs with all these robotic, uh, making them dinosaur men. And so it kind of has an elephant men type of feel, only slightly, though, because you have these uh, intelligent dinosaurs who are uh, trying to work either with the good guys or the bad guys. And it's all about uh, the mining of uh, dino dinosaur the, 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 the whole materials, uh, but basically this feels like a Saturday morning cartoon because you have uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex in like this, you know, little battle rig, as it were, going up against other ones with like, ho just these just horrible, like, just cartoony, like, bebop and rock steady names. Like you have uh, Tricera Chops, who's kind of like the in-between of she wants Dynamen to rule for themselves, and then you have <laughs> like Break uh, Breakosaurus Rex and uh, uh, Terror Terrorosaurus. Um, it's just a great issue. This is an all-ages type of feel to it. I mean, I didn't see any bloodshed in this issue at all. You get fights, you get dinosaurs. 
Uh, eight-year-old me is really liking this book, and uh, you know, if you know an eight-year-old in, in your life, or you're, you are a fellow eight-year-old once again, this is definitely right up your alley. It was fun, and that's what comics need to be more nowadays. And finally this week, from Marvel, we have Avengers number 12. Not Avengers Academy number 12, but Avengers 12. We have the conclusion of The Hood going up against Thanos. And Thanos trying to tell him, listen, you should give me that gauntlet. Um, I know how to control it, you don't. And listen, I'll make you a little business partner if you just hand that over. Hood's not buying it, he knows something's up, and so, sure enough, oh, okay, well, we'll just go to plan B then. It was Doctor Strange the entire time. He was trying to trick him into just giving up the glove willingly. But now, the Hood has to go up against uh, Hulk with a power gem. And that knocks him loose enough well, uh, knocks the uh, gems out of his hand, and he only has one remaining, but it's too late by this point. The Avengers have the gauntlet, they have all the Infinity Gems, except the one, and he's not going to give it up willingly. Well, it's too late, the gems talk to each other, they want to be one. And so Iron Man, with the Infinity Gauntlet, tells him what's going to happen. He's going to return the hood to his jail cell, and then wish the entire glove out of existence. Because then, no one has anything to fight over about, right? Right? Well, at the end, we discover, after uh, Captain Rogers invites Red Hulk onto the Avengers, because he's, he, he sees a future in this kid, the Illuminati are alive and well. And Stark didn't wish the glove out of existence, but he wished it to the Illuminati. And once again, it's the whole behind-the-scenes thing. Everyone takes their gem again. But Black Bolt's not present, so Steve Rogers is going to fill in for Black Bolt and be a part of the Illuminati now. So I was a huge, gigantic fan of the Illuminati way back when, when it was uh, New Avengers and all that. So just to see it returning now, I'm very, very pleased. It was a very good end to this conclusion. A good end to this conclusion, that makes sense. Good end to this arc. John Romita Jr.'s art was just gorgeous as usual. And then Brian Michael Bendis, he won me over this round. Well played, Bendis. Well, that does it this week for Kami's Comic Corner. If you want more Kami's Comic Corner goodness, you can head on over to www.kamiscomiccorner.com. On Wednesday, you got Geeky Talkie. On Friday, you got Kami's Favorite Covers. And then on Sunday, you have the regular review show. And then at the beginning of the month, book of the month, end of the month, you have the top shelf selection. Now, this is where you come in. The loyal... Uh, Kami's Comic Corner has been brought to you by loyal viewers like you. Right now, I have two auctions going on eBay. It is sponsorship for the month of May. In the video review show, if you want to sponsor your company, uh, production, comic, what have you, you can get five sponsorship for five episodes in the month of May, or if you want to be on Geeky Talkie, four episodes. And you'll your sponsorship will be at the beginning and end of every episode, and then you will also get a 160 by 600 banner on the website as well. So something to consider. All the stats are up on Kami's Comic Corner on the front page there. So you can go check the uh, little fine print and then links to the auction as well. So this does it for Kami's Comic Corner for this week. I have been your host, Kami. I will see you here bright and early next week. Huzzah! Yeah!